Earlier we have seen forces on dislocation such as glide force, climb force. Now we will be seeing an equation which can give us what are the forces which are acting on dislocation irrespective of a nature of a dislocation. So let's derive or let's consider a general case and try to derive a relation between a force and a dislocation nature. So that relation is called as a pitch kohler equation. So let's consider any dislocation line which is mentioned here and let's consider this as to be a general dislocation line segment. That means this dislocation can be an edge or mixed or a screw dislocation. Now let's say I consider this part of the dislocation which is marked with green and it moves let's say in this direction let's say dr that is a displacement of a dislocation under an influence of a force or externally applied stress. So when this dislocation moves by a displacement dr it will traverse or it will cover an area. Let us call that area as dA. So this area dA can be found out using cross product of dL and dR. So magnitude of this will give you give us the what is the area which is being covered or traversed by this dislocation line when it moves by a displacement dr. Now let us consider a normal to this area and I call it as n here and it can be found out a vector which is perpendicular to this area that is dl cross dr upon the magnitude. So this is a unit vector perpendicular to this cross section area dA. Let's say a t that is a unit vector along a dislocation line which we already which we define for most of the dislocations. So let's consider this t which is a unit vector along a dislocation line and this t will be given as that is we have considered this as dl. So this will be dl upon a magnitude of dl of this dislocation line segment. Now let's consider the force per unit length of this dislocation is fl. Now let's say the sigma is a stress tensor acting on this crystal which contains this dislocation line and thus there will be a traction that is acting over this area dA which is given as sigma dot n which is a normal to this area and this traction is nothing but a force per unit area which is being exerted by crystal below this dA on the crystal above dA. So this is a traction force which acts on this area dA by crystal below dA on the crystal above dA. So you have a crystal above this area dA and you have a crystal below this area dA and this traction quantifies a force per unit area that is acting on this area that is a force acting on this area by crystal below dA on the crystal above dA. This is very important and it is given as sigma dot n which is a normal to this area dA. So force due to traction can be written as Ft, I write it here Ft as T dA that is I know T and I can multiply it with the area and I can find out a force which is acting on this area dA. So this Ft due to traction and now I can find it in terms of a applied externally applied stress. So I write it as sigma n. The sigma is a stress tensor acting on a crystal. And then I can find it out what can be Ft. So here n which we have figured it out to be dl that is a cross product of dl dr. So we have figured it out n to be cross product of dl and dr divided by its magnitude of that cross product. 
and simply we can replace this area da by magnitude of dl cross dr and you can see that i can get ft in terms of sigma that is a stress tensor acting on a crystal dl that is a general dislocation line segment and dr which is a displacement this dislocation line is going through so i get a ft which is a force due to this traction now let's make a convention because when this crystal shears so i can see that this above crystal is sharing with respect to a crystal below as we have seen that this traction force which is acting by a crystal below da on a crystal above da so here let's define a convention that t and b are parallel for a right hand screw that means i can consider that this direction that is the moment along this direction to be positive so when when we say that top crystal is shearing or uh, moving or slipping over a bottom crystal along this direction we can consider this displacement to be positive and thus the work done on a crystal that is i am evaluating a work done on the crystal as w crystal internal so this is a complete crystal and there is a moment or a slip of the top part of the crystal on a bottom part and thus it will cause some work and i call that work as internal work done so that internal work done can be can be written as ft that is a force due to traction and this traction is nothing but a force acted acting on crystal above this area da by a crystal below da basically so this is a force acting by this crystal below let's say i am considering this da uh, on this plane so i can consider that force acting by the crystal below on the crystal above and that i call it as internal work done and we can write this we have found out what is ft so we can write this work done as sigma dl cross dr into b now what we can do is that we can bring this b here and rearrange this term so i find the work done internal work done on the crystal as sigma b dl cross dr so this is a relation we have got now we can write this relation in this form using a property of a scalar triple product so using this property i can rearrange this term here and i write in this way where internal work done on the crystal as sigma b cross dl dot dr now i consider that the internal work done in the crystal is equal to work done the external work done on the crystal because of the applied stress so i consider this as to be equal so i can write this work done external work done on a crystal to be as sigma b cross dl dot dr so this is what we get external work done on a crystal by applied stress sigma and now let's find out a work done on a dislocation so we know that work done on a dislocation can be found out by taking fl that is a force per unit length of a dislocation that is what we have defined multiply by the length of a dislocation and we consider dl to be a length of a dislocation line segment so fl into dl will give us the force which is acting on a dislocation line segment that is a dl into dr which is a displacement of a dislocation line so i can find that the work done on a dis uh, dislocation and this work done on a dislocation i compare it with the work the external work done on a crest and when we do that we get this relation so this term will get rid of that is dr and i can divide this dl i'll bring down this to the this side 
and you can find out the force per unit length on a dislocation line to be sigma b cross dl that is a vector dislocation line vector and divided by its magnitude and this is nothing but a definition of your tangent vector so you have fl that is force per unit length of a dislocation line as sigma b cross t and this is a general equation which we got and this relation or equation is called as pitch kohler equation so where that is a force per unit length of a dislocation line is given in terms of an externally applied stress tensor uh, with its product dot product with a burgess vector cross the tangent vector of a dislocation line so this is a this is called as a pitch kohler equation now let's understand this pitch kohler equation by taking some examples let's consider application of pitch kohler equation so let's consider this crystal where we have a, an edge dislocation where you have mark we have marked the tangent vector and a burgess vector and that burgess vector is perpendicular to a tangent vector and let's mark our coordinate axis that x1 x2 and x3 in this fashion and let's mark the stresses acting on this crystal so what are the stresses so let us write it down so this one will be sigma this is acting on plane 1 along two directions so this will be sigma 1 2 this will be sigma 1 3 similarly this is acting on plane 2 along one direction so this will be sigma 2 1 this is also sigma 2 1 uh, in the opposite sense and this will be this is acting on so this will be sigma 1 3 other counterpart so this will be sigma 1 3 and this will be sigma 1 2 only so let's mark our stress tensor so we have sigma 1 2 you have sigma 1 3 you have sigma 2 1 this is sigma 2 1 and we have sigma 3 1 so here it should be so let us write it down that also sigma 3 means it is acting on plane 3 along one direction so it should be like this sigma 3 1 and similarly it should be on the back face there so this is our stress tensor which we have marked and let us mark our tangent vector and burgess vector so our burgess vector will be b which is along one direction is acting along one direction so you have b 0 0 as our burgess vector and a tangent vector you can see that it is along three direction x3 direction so it should be 0 0 1 that is a unit vector so it, it has a unit magnitude so that's why it is 0 0 1 whereas burgess vector has a magnitude of p and you can write this burgess vector let me write it down also you can write this as b 1 0 0 now let's find out uh, sigma dot p and when i do that what i get is 0 sigma 2 1 into b sigma 3 1 into b now this is our pitch color equation and we take a cross product let's do that of this sigma dot p into tangent vector and when we do that what we have is uh, so let's uh, here there is a mistake let me correct it so here this term is zero okay this term is zero and when you take a determinant of this which gives us the force acting per unit length of a dislocation line and it comes out to be sigma 2 1 b i now if you see this term that is sigma 2 1 dot p which is a magnitude and it is along i that is nothing but our x1 direction and thus it acts on this plane this is sigma 2 1 is our a glide force or what you say a shear stress which is acting on 
on this plane let's say this slip plane and along a Burgess vector that is it is acting along x1 direction so this is our a glide force this is what we can find it out using simple stress state also let's say you say sigma 1 2 which is which is acting on this plane so it is not on a slip plane so this will not cause any let me write it down so this will not cause any any movement of the dislocation or sigma 1 3 similarly sigma 1 3 you have sigma 1 3 on this plane which is not on the slip plane or along the Burgess vector direction so we will not have you will not have sigma 1 3 contributing sigma 2 1 is the only stress and you find that sigma 2 1 is the only stress which is acting on this plane that is a slip plane and along the Burgess vector direction thus it cause a glide of this an edge glide of this edge dislocation so let us mark this also and so this is the only one which will cause glide now let's take another example let's consider this edge dislocation which is on this slip plane and here now we have normal stresses so we have some shear stresses and we have some normal stresses so let's mark our stress tensor and you have sigma 1 1 that is a normal stress sigma 1 2 which is this sorry this this sigma 1 2 is must be this uh, shear stress which is acting on plane 1 along two direction sigma 2 1 will be this shear stress and sigma 2 2 which is a normal stress along x2 direction so we have marked our stress state and let's find out our Burgess vector which is b 0 0 0 and tangent vector to be 0 0 1 and when we find a dot product of sigma dot p you will get sigma 1 1 b and sigma 2 1 b and 0 so this will be our sigma dot p now let's find out the force per unit length of this dislocation and you can get that by taking a determinant of this and uh, what you get is that sigma 2 1 bi minus sigma 1 1 bj so this will be sigma 2 1 which is acting on the slip plane along x1 which is nothing but the direction of our Burgess vector so this will be our glide force and in this case you can see that sigma 1 1 which is acting perpendicular to this plane that is plane 1 and this is the plane 1 is nothing but parallel to an extra half plane so let me write that also so this is our extra half plane which is perpendicular to tangent vector and a Burgess vector so this will be our extra half plane and which is parallel so this plane is parallel to x1 plane so this uh, component will be a climb component so our climb force of this total force acting on this dislocation line that is a force per unit length acting on this dislocation line so this is a glide force and this is a climb force which is acting now you can see that it has a negative sign so that means this will be acting downwards or this is acting along a j direction that is along x2 direction so this force will make this dislocation climb down because it has a negative sign and we have already seen that when you have a tensile force which is acting on or which is a tensile force perpendicular to this extra half plane we have seen that it will make this dislocation to climb down and this is what is being predicted using a peach kohler equation so we can find out what are the components from a given stress state and if you know the Burgess vector and tangent vector you can find out what can be the forces which are acting on this dislocation now what i want you to do is that let's consider a screw dislocation just change the Burgess vector here and find out like 
what are the forces acting on this square dislocation. So these were the simplest cases which we have looked using pitch Kohler equation. Now let's look at where the force components may not be an intuitive to find out. So let's take an another example. Let's take this FCC crystal structure. So you know that FCC crystal structure, it has atoms at the corners and atoms at the face centers. And I have marked here a 1, 1, 1 plane. And let's mark the coordinate axis like x1, x2, and x3 in this way. And this is our 1, 1, 1 plane. This is 1, 1, 1 plane. And let's mark the Burgess vector. So this the Burgess vector will be along this direction. So this is 1, 0 bar 1 direction. You can refer any elementary uh, textbook on material science where which deals with for finding out the Miller indices for these directions and planes. So this will be our 1 0 bar 1 direction and the Burgess vector will be this from this lattice point to this lattice point. So this will be half or a by 2 1 0 bar 1 and let's consider this to be our dislocation line. Let us mark this as a tangent vector. So let me write it down. So this will be our Burgess vector from here to here and this dislocation line is in this way where the tangent vector is perpendicular to Burgess vector. So this is an edge dislocation. So this is a, an edge dislocation and let's consider we apply a normal stress. So I apply a normal stress sigma 1 1. So we can write a stress tensor and all other components as 0 and we just have sigma 1 1. So this becomes a uniaxial stress state. Now let's write B. So we can say that this is 1 0 bar 1 direction. So this will be B will be A by 2 1 0 bar 1. Let us let us find out the directions also. Let me do that. So we have marked this as our coordinate axis. So let's consider this as to be 0 0 0 to change color. So this point is along x3 direction so this will be 0 0 1 and this will be along x1 direction so this point i'm talking about this lattice point it will be 1 0 0 now when i want to find out any vector what i do is like end minus beginning that is how we do it for vectors so this vector will be 1 0 0 minus 0 0 1 and it comes out to be 1 0 bar 1 that is how we find out the directions similarly let's do for the tangent vector so let's consider this lattice point and i consider this lattice point to be 0 1 0 and this will be this lattice point will be 0 half sorry this will not be so it will be, let us do that, this will be half, here y is 0, so it will be 0 and it will be half. So now we find out the tangent vector, tangent vector should come out to be half, 0, half, minus 0, 1, 0. And it will come out to be 1 by 2, minus 1, 1 by 2 and you can see that it will come out to be 1 let's multiply it bar 2 1 by 2 and this will be this direction 
let me this comes out to be 1 bar to 1 and in Miller indices we don't consider that half portion or half fraction and uh, the unit vector we want to find out a unit vector so we, we want to find out a unit vector what you have to do is that you take a magnetic divided it by magnetic so it comes out to be 1 upon root 6 1 bar to 1 this is how we get a tangent vector now what we get sigma dot b to be a by 2 which is nothing but a magnitude of the purchase vector and this is a stress state and you have this purchase vector as 1 0 bar 1 and what you find that sigma dot b to be a by 2 sigma 1 1 0 0 now let's find out a force per unit length on this dislocation line that is using a pitch Kohler equation sigma b cross t and let's do that and you can see that you can get this force per unit length as minus a upon 2 root 6 sigma 1 1 j minus a upon root 6 sigma 1 1 k so now the unit vector along b which i can say that that is 1 upon root 2 1 0 bar 1 and a glide that is a glide component which can be found uh, which you can find because we define glide to be on the plane slip plane along the Burgess vector direction so we can find that f glide to be this fl which is force per unit length that is a force acting on this dislocation per unit length and its component along the Burgess vector direction and we do it how we find it out we you take a dot product with the unit vector along this Burgess vector and that is why we we have figured it out what is a unit vector along the Burgess vector direction so the f glide let me write it down actually so you have a glide force and glide we know that it acts along Burgess vector so that's why we are finding out the glide component from this force per unit length and we get it as to be a upon root 12 sigma 1 1 now what can be the glide force so we we know the magnitude of this glide force and you take a dot product along this Burgess vector direction so you get a direction with a magnitude also so you can find out in a vector form that is f glide and it comes out to be a upon root 24 sigma 1 1 1 0 bar 1 and that's how we get a glide component and when you want to find out f climb so we know that f climb will be perpendicular to this plane which is a slip plane so the perpendicular to this slip plane which direction will be perpendicular to this slip plane so it will be a 1 1 1 direction so you can write for any textbook let me write it down also so so that you can refer so let's say i have an hkl plane and so the perpendicular to this or normal to this hkl plane will be given as that will be hkl directions only so this is a direction and this is a plane which i am talking about this is a plane and this is a direction so let's say i have 0, 0, 0, 1 plane so 0, 0, 1 direction will be perpendicular to this 0, 0, 1 plane this is what it means similarly I have this 1, 1, 1 plane as a slip plane so we know that the climb force will be perpendicular to this slip plane or you can say that it is perpendicular to the extra half plane will be perpendicular to the slip plane so you can find out a direction perpendicular to this 111 plane as 1 upon root 3 111 
so here we are doing it a unit vector along 1 1 1 direction and it comes out to be minus a upon 2 root 18 into sigma 1 1 minus a upon root 18 sigma 1 1 equal and you can find it out to be minus 3 upon a 2 root 18 sigma 1 1 and this will be our magnitude of the Klein force. So if you want to find out in a vectorial form what you can do is that you can multiply or uh, take a dot product along this direction perpendicular to 1 1 1 plane and that is what we are doing it here and as Klein you can say that magnitude multiplied by the direction you get f climb that is in a vectorial form so it comes out to be minus a upon root 24 sigma 1 1 along 1 1 1 direction so this is an application of pitch color equation and thus we can find out what are the glide force and climb force which are acting on the dislocation and here you cannot intuitively find out what can be the glide force and climb force Thus, the speech cohular equation helps us to find out what can be a glide component of that force and what can be the climb component of that force which is acting on these dislocations. So with this, I will stop here.